Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 60, six-day challenge 9.0, and today is day 44. Today we are wrapping up our training on the campaigns applet, and we're going to go through the Google search traffic ads. Definitely one of the more unique ad styles inside of the KW Campaigns applet. It does require a little bit of knowledge and a significantly larger budget than most of our single listing ads. But let's dive into it so you can get a better understanding if it's something that could work for your business. Uh, we're going to come over to the megaphone icon, seventh one down, open up our Campaigns applet. We're going to go to Create Campaign, Paid Ad, <clears throat> excuse me, and then we're going to Select one of two traffic ads. Now, I've told you in the past that sometimes the, you know, the difference between buyers and sellers doesn't make a big difference. In your Google search traffic ads, it does make a difference. So it's really depending on what you're looking for, <clears throat> what you're looking to do. Depending on your budget, you might run both. But the keywords that are utilized inside of these ads differ based upon which ad type you're going to use. So it's really important that you pay attention. Let's say you're trying to get traffic to a specific property listing that you have. Maybe it's a million dollar, multi-million dollar property. You know it's gonna take a little while to sell, but you wanna drive traffic to that site. In that case, you would be looking for buyers. You might just be looking for generic sellers right now. You want more listings, you wanna grow your listing volume, you would go with attract sellers. Now, I'm gonna be really honest with you. These were the two ad types I left to the end because I didn't know as much about them as I do the others. And frankly, I haven't used them yet. So when I'm stuck and don't quite know everything about command, I go to answers.kw.com. And I think I told you about that during day one, but answers.kw.com has a ton of resources on all of your campaign social paid ads. I think Paul has somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe 12 to 15 different articles. You can see the full list here on all of the paid ads that we just covered. So I typically cover them in about eight to 12 minutes, but if you need more detail, if you want to kind of read back through this section of answers, all of answers really, but this section of answers is very, very helpful. So here's our Google search traffic ads. This is the ad, the article that I read before recording this video, and it does have a lot of great tips and nuance and kind of really walks you through the process. So first of all, important to note that you do not need a Google ads account. You don't need to have an account connection to run these ads. They're being run through KW's global ad account. So it makes it a little easier in that you don't actually have to have your own account. Second thing is this is not a short term play. So these are monthly subscriptions and typically you're going to need to run this probably in my guess two to three months to start getting the traction that you want. Um, it's also important that you not make changes to the ad campaign once it's been established because if you make a change, then it has to go back to Google for reapproval and it basically starts it back over at square one. Finally, our Google search ad campaigns are uh, traffic ads, not lead capture ad, meaning there is no lead capture form. You're going to be driving them to a specific website where if you're looking for leads, you would capture the leads there. So really important nuances. This is really just to drive traffic to a specific site. So when we come back in, you'll see, let's see, we're going to say attract buyers. The first thing we need to do is decide where we want these ads to start showing up. Where are people searching for? So I might say um, I am looking, let's say I have a $2 million horse ranch that I'm looking to sell, right? So uh, that is located in um, Bullshire, which is close to Katy, which is also close to Richmond. So let's do a few of these. We're going to do Katy, Texas. I'm going to do Fullshire, Texas. I'm going to do Richmond, Texas. Right. So I could do a couple of more if I wanted, but these are the keywords that are going to be triggered on the ads, depending on right what's going to actually be showing up. Next up, we've got the destination URL. Where am I going to send them when they click on the ad? Now, again, it's really important, right, that this is probably, you know, needs to be more generic than specific. But in this case, I want to drive traffic specifically to my horse ranch property. So in that case, I might put in the link to my site. And this is where I would find the full URL for that listing. I don't have that, so I'm just going to leave it at martymiller.kw.com for right now. 
um, with regards to your ad details. Okay, this is where the keywords come into play. Now, Keller Williams has already done you a favor in that they have added 40 keyword strings in the ad type already. And so I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't read this article. And I would have been in here trying to find out my own keywords. There's a link to this article within the first article. And here are the keywords that are already built in for buyers and sellers. So you can see a lot of these are already taken care of, but there's not much around horse farms, horse ranches, land for sale, anything along those. So I might come back in and just say, hey, I'm gonna add keywords and I'm gonna add, um, you know, farm and ranch. And then I'm gonna say, all right, let's add another one. Let's do horse ranch. And let's come back in and let's do uh, acreage, acreage for sale. <clears throat> and uh, you know, you can go through and add. It's important not to put commas in here and then put them all in one keyword string. They do need to be added each. And you can see the keyword strings need to be 10 words or less. Um, I might say equestrian properties for sale. Um, horse ranchers for sale, farm and ranch. Um, so you can see, you can go through and add some additional keywords. Again, making sure what you don't want to do is add these keywords. These are already added. If you add them twice, it will cause issues with your ad. So once we've got our keywords added in, then I can proceed to my last step. Negative keywords are basically like, hey, if they include this word in their search string, please don't include it. Uh, so I might just put in free, right? Because my two point whatever million dollar horse ranch is not free. So if they were searching for horses for free, right, then my ad wouldn't show up. Um, then we can proceed to the last step. This is where we're going to select our start date. Now remember, this is a monthly recurring subscription. So this is the date that you would be charged each month. You can see every 30 days you're going to be charged. What's the budget? So you can see what that budget looks like anywhere from 250 up to $2,500. It'll tell you the estimated number of clicks. Now remember, that's not necessarily leads. That's just the number of people that would click on your ad per month. Then it's up to you to capture that information. You can see I've added my billing information already, and then I've got a total. One thing to note as well, um, each of these ads inside the system, they're called programs. It is what it is, right? So the program name right here is very generic, but I've got this pencil icon. This is the same for all the other ads as well that we talked about. We just never made it to the payment screen, but I would recommend we click on that pencil and change this. So this might be, um, you know, one, two, three, Main Street, Horse Ranch. All right, doesn't change anything really on our setup. It just lets me know that if I'm running multiple ads, I can know which ad is which. <clears throat> so this could be a great tool if you're just looking to generate additional traffic to a specific website. It could be a great tool just to generate leads for, again, if you're doing, we talked about first time home buyer seminars. If you're doing a regular seminar series, right, you might be driving traffic to your landing page that lists all of your Eventbrite links or something along those lines, right? Um, it is something where you, you got to kind of pay to play and it could have, you know, you've got to let it run and you've got to pay in order to do it. So probably not for your brand new starting agent, uh, but certainly someone with several closings under their belt that has some experience, something for teams that could potentially be used, uh, but just one more ad type. And again, remember the keywords that are being utilized are different depending on whether you're looking to attract buyers or attract sellers. Okay, so this is one of those ad types where it is really important when we get into the campaign selection that you select the correct one based upon what you are looking to do, whether you're looking to create more buyers or looking to create more sellers. The keywords will differ. You want to make sure you're choosing the correct one. That's it for today, guys. Putting a bow on campaigns. As always, I hope you're having a fantastic day, and I'll look forward to speaking with you again real soon.